Sometimes people ask me, what do you think is the most overpowered or strongest weapon in Dark Souls? Now, there's plenty of answers to that on Google, but if you want my opinion, which I assume people do when they ask me, it's a build or a weapon that's more of a new game plus than a new game, because the main two things that make it so powerful aren't obtained until relatively late in Dark Souls 1. And that would be the Painting Guardian Blade with Dark Moon Blade. Now, of course, you can substitute these in various ways to achieve similar results, but I think that is probably the most overpowered you can get in PvE, that is to say, player versus enemy. Player versus player is another matter entirely, where I believe the most powerful weapons would probably be Halberd and the Zweihander. The halberd with high poise and counter pokes, it means you can just stand there, wait for someone to attack, attack them at the same time. You might trade, but you will always come out on top in that situation, unless they are also counter poking, maybe? And the Zweihander, well, you have dead angles, which means, I mean, what can you do against that? Not all that much. Plus, it has high stun locking potential and high damage. But for PvE, the Painting Guardian Blade absolutely destroys just about everything in the game. If we're talking about builds then, well you'd want 40 decks because it has great scaling with decks, along with 7 strength so you can actually wield it. Then you'd also want Faith for using Dark Moon Blade, but of course you can sub that out for any weapon buff. You could have Crystal Magic Weapon, you could just use Resins or Sunlight Blade, it's do whatever you want. Dark Moon Blade I think is the strongest and most versatile weapon buff though. What really makes the Painting Guardian Blade so good is its speed. See, it has bleed build up on it, and whilst the bleed might not be as strong as what you'd get on, say, Priscilla's weapons, you can buff this weapon. You can't buff her scythe or her dagger. So not only are you going to be tearing 30% or so of the boss's health every couple of hits, that speed also plays into effect in two other ways, one of which is a lot more obvious than the other. First up, fast attacking weapons are ideal because it means you can hit the boss once or twice, then have no real recovery frames to speak of before you're able to block or roll. What this means is, I mean, obviously, they're very safe and they're hard to punish. You have plenty of time to whack a boss once and then have time to do your next action, whereas say, if you're using a very slow weapon, you have to time it a lot better. Second of all, weapon buffs. These don't work in the smartest way in Dark Souls 1. Instead of adding a percent of extra damage, they add a flat damage bonus per swing. Example, let's say Dark Moon Blade adds 20 damage onto your swing. It's going to be 20 damage whether you're using an Ultra Great Sword or a Dagger. So obviously, the faster you are swinging, the better. So now you have the base damage of Painting Guardian Blade on top of the bleed and the buffs damage. There are ways to do more damage in terms of one-shotting bosses using things like, I don't know, the Crystal Demon Great Axe, or Power Within and Pyromancy with Fire Tempest, but I feel like this is the easiest way to just demolish the majority of the game without much gimmicks. It's just R1 spam, like Dark Souls 3. Couple this with High Poise, which makes a lot of the game trivial by itself, because you can just stand there and batter things. I'm not sure what bosses would even pose any sort of threat to you in Dark Souls 1 if you're doing this. Now of course, not every boss bleeds, but enough of them do to make it worthwhile. And even losing the bleed, it's still an insane weapon. The bleed is just a bonus. The only real weakness would be your lack of range, but that's not really an issue when you can just walk up to things and hug them whilst you poise smash them into oblivion. Again, it's more of a PvE than a PvP thing. You can do it in PvP, you can R1 spam people into oblivion in PvP. Usually you have to rely on a bad connection though, because if there's a good connection, they'll easily be able to parry you, because, you know, R1 spam is parry bait. If we're talking Dark Souls 3, the Warden's Twin Blades are very good spammy weapons that also have bleed, but none of the games allow you to steamroll them to the extent the first game did. Is that a good thing or a bad thing in your opinion? On the one hand, I like having the option there to make something so absurdly overpowered, but I do appreciate the updated and improved balance of Dark Souls 2 and 3, and Bloodborne. 
making them a more even and fair experience for everyone. That said, the only real issue I see with insanely strong things is when people use them on their first playthrough. My first playthrough of Dark Souls was using a Divine Zweihander and the most suboptimal build you can imagine, but you know, it was fun. I don't think there's any real point in minimaxing and looking up online guides when you're playing through something for the first time, but that's just me. I'm the Silvermont. Bye.